Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Becker. Uh, for those of you who know me as the guy that shows up at council meetings, um, I am an affordable housing developer for those who don't know. Um, and I also am a community advocate, a longtime member of this community here in Antioch, and somebody who helps to find solutions for those in need, and also for those that are looking to fill that need. And so that is what brings us here today to this property, to this site. We know here in Antioch that our unhoused have very little resources. Our city has taken larger measures than some other local cities have taken, but it doesn't meet the scale or need that we have. So how do we capitalize on those opportunities that the city has taken? How do we grow out of those into something larger? That's a location, a space, a navigation center, a shelter, and also permanent supportive housing. That's all of that rolled into one. And that kind of space requires at least three acres. And here in Antioch, we haven't found property that is suitable for that need until today. And this is that property. And so that's why I'm excited to sit here and to show you that opportunity because it's not just something that can be dreamt about. It's not just something that can be talked about at a coffee shop. It's something that we can drive by, we can envision and we can embody in our everyday lives and in the outreach and the services that we provide to the community. When we talk to somebody on the street and they say, where do we go when I have a need? We say here. Today, I sit at the old golf and games in Antioch, 501 Auto Center Drive. For those of you that have been here in Antioch long enough, you remember golf and games closed in 2014. It came to Antioch in 1991. Business entrepreneur came into this city and built an almost 8,000 square foot building on a three and a half acre site with 60 parking stalls and a miniature golf and batting cage facility. In 2014, unfortunately, that business had to shutter its operations. Another business came in and ultimately had to shutter theirs as well. There was a lack of support within our community for economic growth on the site and a church stepped in in 2017 and bought this facility and built it into what you'll see here today. A space that promotes community, love, empathy, spirituality, and a common central goal of growth and prosperity. And here at this site, that's an 8,000 square foot roughly building with restrooms, classroom spaces, a small kitchen space, office space, and a large out parcel for future development of housing services, both emergency, interim housing, and permanent supportive housing. Just this last month, we saw the city of Antioch once again be creative and innovative and create its innovative housing overlay for properties that could host tiny homes, permanent supportive housing solutions for those that have a need that our inflated society just cannot meet right now. And this was one of those properties. Unbeknownst to the city, the property owner is looking to exit this site because the growth of their church has push, pushed them to a greater need but yet here on the other side, the city is creating opportunities for the site. That's synergy. That's a community working together towards a common goal, even if they don't know it yet together. And so what I'd ask you all today, after we finish up this long-winded speech that I typically have, is to walk with me through the property, to envision the opportunities, but then to advocate for them, to speak up, to tell your community, your council members, your city staff, 
your church leaders, that there are dollars there at a city level, in particular right now, our American Rescue Plan Act dollars that we have not spent that can go towards opportunities like this. And so, as I hope you will support this opportunity and this vision here at this site, I'd encourage you all to be open as we walk through, to not let the typical stigmas or stereotypes that surround shelter housing or the unhoused population fill your mind, but instead to remember that you live here in Antioch. You're a part of Antioch. You're a part of that solution. And when we find that solution for Antioch, it's not just a solution for the unhoused. It's a solution for you. So now we'll take a walk through the property and I hope that you'll agree with me. All right, so now we're outside. Thank you all for taking the time. And what we have here is, as you can see, a large parking lot, 60 stalls. Once again, the previous golf and games here. So as we come around, we'll see the big building over here. And what used to be the golf and games. And then we come back around and we see the parking lot. And all the way down at the parking lot, we see the old golf carts and the go-karts where there, that track was. And so we're talking about developing all of this piece of property into both permanent supportive housing and transitional housing. And for size and scale, this gives us the opportunity to open up that development, to create that open space so that there's not chaos, that there's an opportunity for everyone to have their individual space. And it's not a huge impact on the surrounding community. And then as we come around over here, we'll just walk this way. We see that there's this common area for outside services where individuals can come and they can rest. They can engage with caseworkers and service providers, enjoy a meal. Over here, we have the old batting cages as we can see, it's all torn out, waiting to be developed. And we understand that the opportunities for development on site are great. So we wanna make sure that we accent those needs of the community appropriately through the development. And all of this space can be converted to permanent supportive housing or interim housing. And so that's for the individuals an opportunity to get into shelter housing, to establish services, to get a baseline established, and then to exit into permanent supportive housing. Permanent supportive housing is still connection with the tenants, but there are rents that are paid. This is long-term housing. This is that final place for the individual to go where they can succeed and thrive within the community. So as you can see, we've taken two paramount needs in our community and brought them together on a site where they can complement and work together so that individuals who have to exit out of transitional housing can potentially have a place to go and can stay connected to those services. And so we'll come around this way and we'll see how big the property is. All right, and as you can see here, the space is large. It is undeveloped, but we do have the miniature golf already pulled out, ready for development. And so that's a blank slate for our community. That's where the city and those service providers can make sure that what they bring is appropriate. You wanna have a site where you properly address the needs of the community, and that's in the placement of the housing units and those service components. And that's what this site speaks to, that greater opportunity. So as you can see, it's a very large space and a large opportunity. It is right here off of Auto Center, but there it is disconnected. There are barrier lines that separate this community from the rest of the community. And I think that's important because we wanna have a place where there can be tranquility and peace for those individuals that are out in chaotic environments. When they come in, just like a church, 
you want to have a refuge, a place where these individuals can establish once again their baselines and then successfully move into places of power and success for them. Because we want each individual to not just reestablish their connections with their previous desires or wants or wishes in the community, but also to build new ones, to flourish and to understand that here is a place of hope and opportunity. And so we're gonna step back inside and we'll take a look at that built out space. It's a little different than this space. It's had some work done to it since you've seen it as golf and games. And I'm excited to show you because that's the space where people are gonna be able to come in and to be connected with those services, those phenomenal individuals that work within those supportive services and county and city spaces and be able to exit into permanent placement. So come on in with me and we'll look at the inside. Go. All right, so we're back inside. And as you saw earlier in the video, this is the large open forum area. It has had a lot of improvements done, so we'll take a walk towards the front. To give you an idea of scale, we can see all of these chairs lined up. And I think that gives us a, a vision, a picture, of the capacity that this site can hold. And I'm not talking about the unhoused residents that come here and they seek services. I'm talking about the community members that will be a part of this process. This is a space that envelops that community, but doesn't overwhelm them. And that community doesn't overwhelm the space. And when two entities, a community and a public space come together and they work together, they're beautiful and they thrive. And so we have a large area with an upper area as well. And so this is a large meeting area for group presentations, group activities, community engagement. And we'll come around here And we come into the restrooms over here. We have an idea of what those restroom spaces look like and that they can already appropriately meet the scale and the need of our community. These are all recent upgrades. We have access throughout the property. Beautiful restroom spaces. Now, we are here uh, without um, the full congregation staff here, so we don't have access to some of the facilities but we do have a lot of supportive service space already carved out through the community or through the space. Uh, we have kitchen space already carved out and we also have some supportive service space carved out downstairs uh, that the church is using as office space, administrative space. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and continue upstairs. All right, now we're upstairs. Uh, we have some service space carved out already uh, with previous church use. As you can see, we have a long hallway with some um, classrooms and office spaces. We only have access to a few of them right now. The congregation isn't here. Going down this way, you can see we also have access to that upper area that we saw downstairs. But come down here, take a look at what one of these spaces could look like. Here, we have small space carved out. So it is tight. Um, there's definitely opportunities for growth here. Um, and I think that the important takeaway here is we do not have to put infrastructure dollars at a large level into developing something new. It's about capitalizing on the opportunity that already exists. I think we can all look at something and say, there could be something more we want. 
but we really need to look at something and say, what does this have that will fill our need? And so this is one of those spaces. We come down this way. And this gives us an idea of the square footage upstairs. Once again, the opportunities for fully building out this building. It's really up to the city or the county or the service providers that end up in this building, whoever it is. We know there's a need and we know that this property can fill that need. Down here, we have some upstairs administrative space once again carved out for those workers as well as our second access back downstairs. So we'll go downstairs and we'll close out and um, I hope that this is an opportunity that everybody can support. Uh, this is a vision that we can all grow and build upon and more importantly this is a need in our community that we can fill. So we'll go back downstairs and we'll close out. Thank you. All right, so we're back downstairs. I think we've all got an understanding of what the opportunities for this site are. The question is, how do we get there? And that's through supporting our council members and our city staff in going down these avenues. We understand that there are processes and there are practices that are already in place. But we also understand that there's a need that is not being met. And so what I would ask for our community members that might be hesitant around this site, show me another. For those community members that say this building might not work, show me another. And for city staff who might not say, this is the right partner or this is the right path, show me another because we know the needs. We've seen the commercial fires. We've seen the unhoused that are sleeping on the streets. And if we do not create this navigation center and tap into the billions of dollars that the state has available to purchase and to build out these spaces, then we continue to be in that tailspin. So it's time for us to grab a hold of the rudder grab a hold of the yoke to pull us out of that tailspin and more importantly to lift us back up to where we need to be. So this is something that is happening. This is a property owner that is looking to sell this property right now for this intended use. I hope that you all can support that. Thank you.